Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It is Christian here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So today I am bringing you another installment of Friday's foundation fix. So today we are actually going to be putting two different foundations to the test. We are going to be trying the Dior Air Flash and we are going to be trying out the Sephora, the Sephora Perfection Mist Airbrush Foundation. Now both of these foundations have been on my list of foundations to try for such a long time. I've heard rave reviews about both of these foundations and the reason why I decided to pick up both is because the Sephora one is set to be a complete dupe for the Dior but some people even say that the Sephora one is actually better. So today what I did is I applied half of my face with each one of these foundations using a flat top kabuki style brush and I think it looks really good. I honestly think you guys you cannot tell which side is which. I think that overall so far I'm very pleased and very very excited about these two particular foundations. I'm definitely eager to see how this foundation is going to wear out through the day and then decide if they are compatible, if they are equal, is one better than the other. Can you save yourself 30 bucks and just forget about the Dior Air Flash and then just go straight for the Sephora one? Or is paying more actually going to give you more bang for your buck? So we're going to test it out. We're going to find out today. So if you're interested in seeing which one of these foundations actually is worth it, or are they both crap? Are they both good? Are they average? Are they good? Are they flawless? If you are interested in seeing which one of these is going to pass the test today, then you are definitely going to want to keep on watching. All right, guys. So today we're going to be trying out two foundations, and I'm going to be doing like a half and half. So today we have the Sephora Perfection Mist Airbrush Foundation, and then we have the Dior Air Flash. Now, these two foundations have been widely claimed to be dupes and that, that they are very similar products and that I have even heard several times that actually the Sephora foundation is actually better than the Dior Skin Air Flash. So I've always been very curious to try out both of them or see how they wear, see which one wears better, and if you can get a similar look and a similar feel for half the price. So today we are going to be testing both of these guys out. Okay, so we'll start with the we'll start with the Sephora. The Sephora Perfection Mist Airbrush Foundation retails for $28 and it comes in nine shades. So what it claims to do, it claims to blur imperfections and seamlessly and control oils for up to 10 hours. With this satin finish foundation the weightless microfine pigments of InstaBlend technology ensure color lays down smooth and seamless so you can build to your desired coverage level from light to full. This claims that you can go from light to full coverage which is awesome because I definitely am more of a full coverage girl. So it says mineral rich red algae extracts pro uh, protects the skin from environmental stressor environmental stressors and helps smooth the skin for soft focused airbrushed finish that lasts. Okay so it says to shake well shake well for five seconds before each use cover your hair and clothes close eyes and hold can 10 inches away from face while pressing the nozzle and moving in circular motions blend with sephora pro foundation airbrush number 55 for lighter coverage spray directly onto a brush and blend end for full coverage spray six to eight inches away from face spraying in circular movements remove with soap and water and washcloths or makeup remover okay so that is the sephora so now let's check out what the Dior claims. Okay, so the Dior skin, oh, and I forgot to mention the Sephora has, the Sephora has 2.5 ounces of product and the Dior skin has 2.3. And it does come in 10 shades, so it does have one extra shade over the Sephora brand. So this one says it's an ultra lightweight foundation that delivers an airbrush effect with precision and ease. What it does, it says get runway ready for the look with this innovative mist foundation inspired by the airbrushing techniques used backstage at fashion shows. The unique micro diffusion system delivers a fine mist of foundation to provide a soft velvety complexion. Customize your coverage by applying by choosing to apply straight from the can for a lighter finish or with a kabuki brush for fuller coverage. It says mother of pearl pigments even skin tone and diminish the appearance of skin irregularities and fine lines leaving your skin glowing with optimal radiance. So it also says to shake well before using extend arm straight out and bend elbow at a 90 degrees. Wow that's a little you know that's a little scientific and it says you should close your eyes and one quick continuous motion spray a layer of foundation over the face in the shape of a Z. Okay so the application methods are different as well. Starting with the forehead and ending with the chin, use a headband or tissue to protect clothing as needed or spray foundation onto a kabuki brush and buff into the face for fuller coverage. So I'm not trying to mess up my hair, get foundation in my hair, not that I don't get foundation in my hair every time I apply my makeup because I totally do. But I think since 
since I'm applying both of these foundations today, since I'm doing a side by side, I can't really do the spray method. So we're just gonna go in with the Kabuki brush on each side of the face to test them out. Okay, so I have already primed my face and I used the Laura Geller. I used the Laura Geller Spackling Hydrating Moisturizer and then I used the Benefit Professional to fill in my pores. Okay, so to start, I think we're gonna use the Sephora Pro Airbrush, the Sephora Perfection Mist Airbrush Foundation. And I'm gonna be using the Morphe E6 Kabuki. So we're just gonna give it the shake. And then I guess, I guess you just spray it directly onto the brush. So it did put out a little bit of product. Hmm. It feels cold. Okay. So we'll go back in. And I'm just trying to evenly coat the brush. For reference, I'm sorry you guys, the shade that I picked up in this foundation is light. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty decent. That's pretty good coverage. It's not like super full coverage or anything, but that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty good. I did a pretty decent job of getting rid of some of the retinas on my skin as well. So I'm not mad at it. And then I basically just have a towel in my lap, so I'm just gonna kind of wipe it off on the towel. And now we're gonna try the Dior on the other half of my face. Same thing. Okay, so I feel like the Dior, I don't know if maybe I sprayed more on my brush, but I feel like the Dior, it goes further. Like the product, there's actually more to disperse. So I think that the finishes look very, very similar. I honestly don't know that you can tell, I really can't tell because my bright lights, but that you can't tell that I have two different foundations on. I feel like the Dior, I think that they look very similar. I think that the Dior did apply a little bit, like I feel like the Dior went a little bit further as far as like the application itself. Like that first spray went a little bit further than the, than the Sephora brand. I do think that they look very similar on the skin and I do think that they are giving almost identical finishes. I just think that maybe the Dior might go a little bit further in the way of coverage. So we're gonna spray it again and then I'm just gonna cover up the brush just like that and then we're gonna apply So like when you look at the cheeks, you can definitely tell that the Dior side did do a little bit more of color correcting. There is still a little bit of redness visible on both sides of my face, but there's not as much redness on the Dior side versus right in here where I've applied the Sephora airbrush foundation. You can definitely see a little bit more redness peeking through, especially in my cheeks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of the Sephora foundation kind of right here in the center. Not very much, just to try to cancel out that redness a little bit more. And then right there along my nose. I don't know you guys, I think it looks pretty, I think it looks pretty good on actually both sides of the face. So as of right now, I think that the Dior provided a slightly bit of a better coverage, but for the price, 
I don't know that it's good enough to justify spending more than double the price between the Dior versus the Sephora. So I think that it actually looks really good. I think it's like one of those foundations that provides really nice coverage, that it's almost like one of those your skin but better type looks. I think it looks I think it looks fairly natural on the skin. I think everything look I think it overall it does look nice, you guys. So we're gonna see. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup off camera and we're gonna kind of see how this is gonna wear throughout the day. I, I'm impressed. It does feel like I do feel like my skin has a little bit of a luminous look to it as well. Like it definitely is like a satin finish. It doesn't feel matte, it doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't look cakey on either side. So, so far so good. I wasn't expecting a whole lot out of either one of these foundations in the way of coverage, but it actually is looking pretty good on my skin right now. So I will be back with my full face of makeup on and I will let you guys know how I'm feeling about each foundation. So I will be back in a few minutes, you guys. So I have my full face of makeup on you guys and I must admit that both of these foundations right now super good on the skin. I am very impressed by how both of these foundations applied, how both of these foundations are just really looking nice on the skin you guys. I think that everything looks flawless. I think everything looks super lightweight. I think that everything, nothing looks cakey, nothing looks heavy. The foundation just sank right into the skin on both sides. I so far absolutely am enjoying both of these foundations. I've had them on probably now for about an hour to an hour and a half, and it is roughly, roughly two o'clock. So I got to a little bit of a later start today, but that's okay. So I think that right now, I mean, I think that they're both beautiful, but I think right now, because they both look so similar, I think that you can save the money right now, and I say that the Sephora one is definitely the way to go. Um, so far, I agree with everybody who says that these are dupes for one another. Out of the gate, the Dior does, in my opinion, apply a little bit of a better coverage. It did do a little bit more a cancellation of the redness in my skin. But once I got the Sephora one layered up a teeny bit more, I feel like you cannot tell the difference between the two whatsoever. You would not be able to tell that I had two completely different foundations on my face right now. So this is the foundation. Nothing is cakey, nothing is heavy, nothing looks super accentuated. My fine lines don't look out of control. I think that everything as of right now, you guys, looks really, really nice. And so far, both of these foundations are getting two thumbs way up for me. So I guess I will keep you guys updated and I will see you in a couple of hours. I am back. <clears throat> so it is about 7.30, so I've had this foundation on for about six and a half hours. And I've got to say that I'm impressed with the way that both of these foundations are performing, you guys. I think that they both look beautiful on the skin. I think that they both look natural on the skin. I cannot tell one from the other. Like, I looked up close in my super magnetic little mirror. I have just really, really tried to critique and notice differences between the two, and I don't. I think that they are both very beautiful, beautiful foundations. They look natural. They do give a very nice, flawless look to the skin. So, I mean, the way it stands at this moment, save yourself the money, you guys, and just get the Sephora one. Um, I don't necessarily think that the Sephora one is better, but I do think it's better because of, obviously, the price tag. Um, I do think that down here, we're down here in these areas, stuff is starting to rub off a little bit. Um, you're starting to be able to see a little bit of my retina starting to peek through. The rest of my face looks really good. Um, nothing is wearing off like on my nose. My fine lines, these, these foundations are settling into my fine lines the least amount that any other foundation that I have tried recently has. So that is definitely, definitely, definitely a huge problem. Plus, I think overall everything is still looking really nice, you guys. I think, I honestly don't even remember which side was which. I think I put the Sephora one on this side and the Dior one on this side, I think. I honestly don't remember, but I think that that just goes to show what good quality the Sephora one is. The fact that I don't even remember or can't even tell the difference. So, and per usual, I have not powdered, I have not blotted, I have not done anything to my face because I just like to see how the true foundation will wear on its own. And I didn't mention earlier, but all of the powders, my bronzer, my highlight, it just went onto the skin so well. Everything just glided very smoothly and seamlessly and everything just seemed to melt into my skin. Sometimes I notice that with certain foundations, things get powdery and patchy and I don't get like a nice 
bronze look or things will look a little bit more muddy and not as put together this this to me is what a good makeup day looks like y'all i mean if i do say so myself i just think that everything just looks super super nice so i will see you in about two hours all right guys and i am back so it is now about nine o'clock so i've had this foundation on for a decent wear time seven hours that's you know that's i think that's a pretty solid time so i love them both i will probably be wearing one of these on my birthday i will probably be wearing one of these on christmas and i will probably be wearing one of these on new year's eve i think they are flawless i think that they are such good foundations now since i have them both i'm not gonna return the dior air flash i will keep it but going forward for like special events and special occasions i will definitely reach for the sephora pro what are you called the sephora hold on the sephora perfection mist airbrush foundation i definitely definitely will be reaching for this when i want just a really a beautiful finish foundation and then i will be using this one for like i guess like super 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 special occasions or i don't know but i like i've mentioned in the past i have a hard time using like super expensive foundations like just on my day-to-day -day life and personally i don't cons wouldn't consider these like everyday foundations i mean i guess you could to each their own um but i definitely do want to test them out with the whole spray method maybe i will do that in a different video at a different time um but overall you guys great foundations if you've been curious like i think i've probably already said 75 times today just go ahead and skip the the heavy the hefty price tag on the dior one and give the sephora one a try if you've always been curious i don't think you would regret it i think that they felt good on the skin they applied way more coverage than i thought that they would i thought that it was going to be a foundation that i was definitely going to have to build up layer after layer after layer i feel like if i had done the spray method i probably would have had to do that but the fact that i just went straight in with the brush it with the brush kind of just alleviated a lot of that extra steps that i might have had to take so yeah guys i love them i think they're great i can't wait to test them out individually and see how they apply on their own and how they wear on the face by themselves so right now today i give both of these two thumbs up let me go ahead and zoom you in really quickly so you can kind of see how everything is looking one last time all right so this is my this is definitely my troublesome area right in here and you can see that nothing on either side of the face it has settled a little bit but definitely nothing bad there is no severe settling in my um forehead region not a lot of not a lot of product has been removed in this area it definitely did move around a little bit but not a lot and and this is how it looks on the other side so i think it wore really nice you guys i'm definitely happy that i was able to mark both of these foundations off of my list so yeah guys that is pretty much it that's my thoughts and my opinions on these two foundations and yeah thank you for joining me today don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you head out you guys don't forget to give this video a thumbs up thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye